Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Faye Mack and I post videos about life in Canada as a Nigerian Canadian and how to thrive in Canada. If this is your first time on my channel, do well to subscribe, hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video and drop me a comment, let's rub minds. In this video, I'm going to be talking about loneliness and depression overseas, not just in Canada, in the UK, US, many other countries that people relocate to and feel quite lonely or depressed. I'm going to be sharing my personal experiences. I'm also going to be sharing tips and tricks on how I navigated my way through these challenges. In my last video, I talked about reasons why people are leaving Canada. One of the points that I highlighted was loneliness and depression. Not everybody's going to feel this way after relocating to a new country, but a good number of people will experience it. And so it's very important to address. While I may have gone through my own challenges with loneliness and things like that, I'm still here in Canada, you guys. I have experienced so many amazing things here in Canada. I've received so many amazing opportunities just by being here. And those things are things that I'm grateful for. And those things are still keeping me in this country because I have the happy life here. I'm not even joking. In another video, I'm going to be talking about why I am not leaving Canada. So if you're interested in that content, definitely subscribe to this channel, hit the thumbs up button and turn on the notification bell so that you get notified when I post a new video. Back to loneliness and depression. When I moved to Canada eight years ago as an international student for my master's degree, I did not know anybody in Nova Scotia. I knew nobody, animal, place or thing, nothing, zilch. I landed, uh, in fact, before I landed, I've mentioned on this channel before, probably twice, that looking down from the plane, I started crying. Tears just started rolling down my eyes. Why? Because I was the last born of my family. I was fresh out of university with just one year of experience. That's NYSC. I literally was a baby. And it was <laughs> tough because I lived such a very sheltered life back home in Nigeria that moving here was going to be my first time actually living alone off campus and just being by myself in a country where I didn't really know people. Now, you can say, yes, you know people in Canada, you have family, friends or, you know, family in Canada. But remember, Canada is a large country. It is the second largest country in the world by landmass. So if you know somebody in another province that is far away from your province, it really doesn't count. It's as good as not knowing anybody in that country. So I knew people in Ontario, but I lived in Nova Scotia. And so I didn't even see the people that I knew in Ontario for years and years. So I moved here trying to get used to the educational system here because of course the educational system varies from country to country, especially from a country in Africa to a country in North America. It was quite drastically different. At that time as a student, you're not only dealing with your own personal uh, remorse about okay was this a good decision or was it not you're not only thinking about your parents and the fact that they sacrificed so much for you to be here and you absolutely have to not let them down you have to graduate with flying colors and succeed so that pressure is there even though they are not mounting pressure on you you have you mount it on yourself because that's the expectation now on top of that you're trying to get used to the system on top of that, when you first see your uh, your first grades, you might be taken aback because guess what? Again, you're still trying to get used to the educational system. For me, there were so many things I was dealing with. I did not have time to make friends. OK, in the beginning, I had no time to make friends. I was always studying in my program. If you had less than a B in more than two courses, that means like you're out, you are not taking that master's program, you are not graduating. So there was a lot of pressure to do well and succeed in that program. So where is the time to make friends? And where is the time to really just go out and socialize? You really have to be intentional about making that time. Before I continue my story, I want to thank BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. BetterHelp is an online platform that helps connect users to licensed therapists. With BetterHelp, you can access therapy through your phone and from the comfort of your home. If you're someone like me who is an introvert, and we'll get to more on that uh, as we go on in this video, I'm an introvert. I do not like to go anywhere. If I could have all my doctor's appointments or 
all my uh, therapy sessions in the comfort of my home, sign me up. And so with BetterHelp, you can stay at home. You don't have to go out if you have social anxiety or if you just prefer to be comfortable in your PJs and be able to access licensed therapists, this is the one for you. In one of my last videos, I brought a family lawyer to talk about divorces and challenges in marriages in Canada. You don't have to wait till you're lonely, depressed, or experiencing challenges in your marriage before you seek therapy. If you feel like you could benefit from therapy, definitely have a look at BetterHelp. You sign up, get matched to a licensed therapist, and if you don't like the therapist that you're assigned to, you can always request a new therapist, and that is resolved immediately. It is very important that we remove the stigma around therapy. One doesn't have to have mental health issues before seeking therapy. If you're experiencing any loneliness and depression as a newcomer or an immigrant to Canada, please ensure that you seek help don't go through it alone. You do not have to go through it alone. With BetterHelp, you can text your therapist, have voice calls, video calls, whatever you're comfortable with. There's no pressure. So definitely seek help if you know that it will be beneficial to you. And I really wish you all the best. So take that as one way that you can really help yourself deal with loneliness and depression as a newcomer and migrant to Canada. The next tip I'm going to talk about is taking vitamin D. Now, this is the one that I take. They're gummies, okay? judge me not, I can't commit to taking pills every single day, so I resort to gummies. But these are vitamin D3 uh, 1000 IU gummies. This is very important. And this was the first advice I got from my course advisor when I first landed and enrolled at my school. Coming from a place like Nigeria, where the sun literally feels like it's on top of our heads, we get a lot of vitamin D. So coming here uh, and experiencing winter, staying indoors for the most part, because you're not used to driving in the winter or walking in the winter, you're not getting enough sunlight. And that's where vitamin D comes in. Tablets, pills, or uh, gummies, whatever it is. Maybe speak to a doctor before you uh, buy one. But you can always research this. It's something you can buy over the counter or you can even order on Amazon. Other than getting enough vitamin D, one thing that you need to realize about winter, especially if you're maybe new here or you're about to experience your first winter, is it gets dark really quickly. And I think that we don't really emphasize this enough, other than the cold, right? Because when it's cold, but during the day when the sun is a little bit out, it kind of helps out with the cold a little bit. Picture this, it's your first winter in Canada. You move here during the fall and winter is approaching. As winter lands, <laughs> it starts getting dark early. It's shorter days and longer nights. So by 8 a.m. when you wake up to get ready for work and get out of the house, or to do school runs. If you're doing school runs, you're probably waking up earlier. But at that time, it's all dark. There's no sun, there's no glimmer of brightness, nothing. It's dark. Now on top of that, you get ready, you go out. On the road, you know, on the way to work, it's still a little bit dark. You get to work, it gets bright, <laughs> it, you're working indoors, you know, maybe it snows or whatever, or maybe it doesn't even snow. By the time you're closing off work at 4 30 5 o'clock it's already dark so when you're coming back home you're coming home in darkness the same way you went to work in darkness there's something that that does to your psyche as somebody who is coming from a tropical country or from a country where this is not a thing. Some days it gets dark by 4 p.m. I remember a few years ago when my siblings finally moved to Canada. They were living in the GTA and I had moved from Nova Scotia to Ontario to be closer to them and also to chase some job opportunities. And so I got a job in Ontario since my family was now in Ontario. I moved from Nova Scotia. That's part of the intentionality that I was talking about. I didn't just stay in Nova Scotia to say, oh yeah, I've been here for three years already. I'm okay, blah, blah, blah. No, the moment my family landed in Canada, I started flying to Ontario to do job interviews. I was very intentional about coming here and being closer to family after three years of being by myself. Back to winter, the job that I got was about an hour and a half away from my family. So imagine being on Third Milan Bridge for an hour and a half. So traffic, uh, all of that. So I couldn't live in the same city as them. Instead, I got a place closer to my office and then every weekend I would go to their place and come back. So Friday evening, I'm getting in my car and going all the way to the Greater Toronto area. 
And Monday morning, I'm getting in my car, I'm driving straight to work, an hour and a half away. Now imagine winter days. I'm looking outside from my office window thinking, oh, it's almost 5 p.m. It's still looking okay. I think I can manage driving. I don't like driving in the dark. That's one thing about me. Before I got my glasses, I hated driving in the dark. And I still do, to be honest. So once it's closing time, I grab my bag, jet for the car. As soon as I enter the car, I realize how dark it is. I realize how dark it is. And then I get on the road to drive one and a half hours to the greater Toronto area to go spend the weekend with my siblings and my nieces. I did that continuously for 11 months, back and forth, back and forth, just because I knew that that was going to help me. Being near my family was going to help me. I wasn't going to sacrifice that. One thing that I also experienced was my husband's uh, permanent residency application. For those of you that don't know, my husband actually applied for permanent residency before me. I was living here, but I was on a work permit and he had agreed to join me. At that time, we were not married. And so he went ahead, did his research and applied through the typical express entry federal skilled worker route. But his application took almost two years. So I was also dealing with that. And that's why I really needed to be close to family. I wouldn't say that I went into depression. I did not. But at that time, having family around was really helpful. And that is why I did not mind driving through the snow. Sometimes it's not even just about darkness. There'll be a blizzard going on. Snowstorm happening. And I'm just there in my small Toyota Yaris 2008 that wind likes to carry back and forth. Just driving, going an hour and a half to the GTA to be near my family members because it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. But those are things that I was intentional about. Even when I would go to the GTA like that, I would organize game nights. So I would find a host, help them plan, help them prepare, and get people to just come together and play games. Newcomers, immigrants, people in the Nigerian Canadian community just coming together to have fun together. And then afterwards, everybody can go back to their normal life and continue hustling, right? But at least you spent those few hours with people of like minds and you enjoyed yourself. That really made a big difference as well. Now, beyond enjoying your own company, finding things that actually entertain you it will help. For me personally, you ask me about any of the Real Housewives franchises, I'm going to talk to you about them and we're going to have a full-blown conversation because why? I watch Real Housewives of Atlanta, Real Housewives of Potomac, Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, Real Housewives of Lagos, Real Housewives of Abuja, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. I watch all the franchises. Why? Because I'm not a movie person. So Netflix, you know, Netflix is great for things like Love is Blind and The Ultimatum. Those are my type of shows. But once you find shows that you like, Big Brother Niger, Big Brother Canada, Big Brother USA, I watch and watch. And, and those shows, they've been filming for so long that there are some of these shows that have 20 seasons. You can never finish them. <laughs> while you're also watching others, right? Married at First Sight is another one that is really interesting. So finding streaming services that offer shows that you enjoy, that will keep you busy. I watch YouTube a lot, even from when I was a student. I used to watch family vlogs, Latoya Forever, uh, Jamie and Nikki. I used to watch a lot of family vlogs. Just watching how people are living was just entertaining to me. It was, it was entertaining, it was exciting. I used to watch them. So for people that used to be consistent with YouTube, I would watch their vlogs and it really would just make me happy and make me chill. That was my entertainment. I had a TV. I didn't even put on that TV for years as a student. I would just have my phone and my internet and I'll be good. So finding things that interest you indoors, for times that you know that you might not be able to go out because of the snow or for whatever reason, it would really help. So this is me as an introvert. I don't want to go out. I don't want to do anything. These are some of the shows that I really love. So if you're a reality TV girl, go look up all these shows that I've mentioned. If you're a movie person, you have a plethora of movies on Netflix, Amazon Prime and all the platforms. Uh, if you're a music person, obviously there's Apple Music, there's Spotify. 
YouTube is there. Trust me, there's endless content on YouTube. Right now, the Honest Bunch podcast, I don't miss it. Right? So these are things that interest me. And so I use it to entertain myself. So I don't get bored. Right? Even when I'm bored, I'm not bored because I have these things that I can watch. So there's several things I've mentioned in this video that I have kind of intertwined, you know, the tips and my experiences in one. Um, but there's some things that I would like to highlight so far. Number one, even introverts can get bored. Enjoy your own company. Number two, vitamin D is very important for you. Next, having family and friends will help. And even if you have family and friends, you still have to be intentional about spending time with your family and friends. For finding entertainment that you love, finding indoor low-hanging fruit type of entertainment that you can just turn on and you're good to go. Your boredom is gone. Next thing I would like to mention is outdoor activities. For someone like me, this is not something that I partake in when it comes to winter outdoor activities. I don't partake in them. I've mentioned severally on this channel, I do not have a good relationship with cold. And so I don't go uh, skiing or snow, I don't even know what they're called, although tubing, is it tubing? Those kind of winter activities, I don't do them. But if you're into those type of activities or if you haven't tried them before, maybe give it a try and see if you actually like them because that way you can make some winter activity friends and go actually have fun during winter. You don't always have to be cooked up in the house like me. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, personally, I'm not a winter person and so I just stay indoors during winter. But of course, I have my entertainment sources here in the house and I'm very fine with them. The next thing I'll mention is keeping in touch with your family and friends back home. I know that it's difficult. <laughs> Sometimes my friends and I will try to talk and listen, it's hard. They call me while I'm sleeping at 2 a.m. and say, oh, and then text me, are you awake, are you awake? No, I'm not awake, I'm sleeping. By the time I wake up, they're at work. By the time they get back, I'm at work. By the time I get off work, they're asleep. It's just the time difference can make it difficult. But if you're intentional enough, you'll be able to find time in between those moments to actually spend time talking and video chatting, video calling with your family and friends. It's very important. Another thing I'll say is beware of Nigerian news blogs. Insta blog, for example, can cause depression. You're not in Nigeria, but reading Nigerian news can cause depression. Yes, I said it. So I learned over time to avoid arguments about Nigeria <laughs> with people and just filter what I'm taking. You know, I still want to know what's happening in Nigeria, so I still consume the content, but I don't let it affect me anymore. So that's something that you might want to consider. Just having community will help you. You don't have to be a part of one association and the other. When you're uh, applying for your PR, I'm sure you would have people in, uh, that are also in that stage with you. There's usually uh, pre-ITA groups, post-ITA groups on Telegram, on WhatsApp, different groups where you can join and just connect with people of like minds. There's so many groups. There are groups for foreign trained lawyers that can help you with your career so that you don't, you know, get depressed while trying to get licensed. There are groups for Nigerian doctors in Canada. There are groups for Nigerian pharmacists in Canada. There are so many different groups. You just have to find those groups and join them. Those groups are typically by referral. So you might want to ask people in, you know, people that know you and that can vouch for you enough to refer you to those kind of groups. So look for look for those. They would really help. And there are some that are just for bands, right? You'll, everybody needs those on serious groups that are just for bands. It's, it's, it's good. It's still going to help you. And some solid friendships get made and formed from those kind of associations. I'm not sure if there's anything else that I'm missing. If there is, the comment section is right here. Please drop tips and tricks that have worked for you over the years. It's really going to help somebody out here. Please, please, please don't just watch this video. This is an opportunity for you to help a random person that you don't know uh, here <laughs> in my comment section or in, or, you know, part of my viewership. 
drop any tips and tricks that have helped you with loneliness and depression here in Canada. We really want to hear them. We want to read them. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel, hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on my videos. Share this video with any of your family and friends that's relocating or that has relocated to Canada. Maybe they can learn one or two things from this video or from the comments that will come out of this video. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.